Aw, oh, man. Honestly, the Jacob Markstrom situation in Calgary, it feels almost like a dying pet. You can see that it's there. You can see that the life form is struggling to stay alive. You can see that there's desperation trying to cling on. But ultimately, you know there's no point. Because you know there is no coming back from this. Now, Jacob Markstrom... Fortunately for everybody, he is not dying, but his situation with the Calgary Flames, that in itself is dying. We'd already made a video earlier this week talking about how, according to certain insiders, it's already confirmed that Jacob Markstrom of the Calgary Flames does want out. And when it comes to what Elliot Friedman said on the recent edition of the 32 Thoughts podcast, this was the episode over here. Oh my Bob. Yeah. Pretty good name right there, and if you wanted to go through to the Markstrom stuff, it is listed in this episode, 3424 of the audio. Link is going to be in the description if you want to go ahead and listen to 32 Thoughts, but when it comes to the Marky Mark situation that Friedman brings up, there are a few extra things that he went out there and stated that have gotten a lot of fans of other fan bases intrigued, to say the least. Now, Markstrom, as we've all been talking about, 34 years old, 6'6", 205, left-handed catcher, signed on to the end of 25-26 in two seasons, making $6 million a year. Now, honestly, we can understand why the Calgary Flames would not have wanted to retain salary when trading him away. He is 34. There isn't really a guarantee that he's going to continue being great. But for the most part, I think it's fair to say that especially towards the second half of the season, Markstrom was really good. And there's more to believe in him than to not believe in him. If any team is going out there and wanting Jacob Markstrom is because they still think that he's this good. 922 save percentage in 21-22 Vesna finalist just two seasons ago. He had a bad year after that, but this season really bounced back. And honestly, Markstrom with the $6 million price tag, it is not necessarily cheap, but at the same time for the Calgary Flames, them not wanting to retain any salary. While it was understandable why they wouldn't want to do that, at the same time, it kind of limited them in terms of being able to make a trade with the New Jersey Devils in the first place. It's why Markstrom is still a flame. It's why they ended off the season with him. And with the Flames trying to make a late season postseason push, they ended up screwing themselves out of getting maximum value for Jacob Markstrom because any playoff team could have really used him in this year's playoffs. Now, let's go over to the wincolumn.ca, because what this article did, written and published by Kareem Kurji, was it went out there and transcribed the same comments made by Elliot Friedman on 32 Thoughts. This is the Jacob Markstrom trade update that Friedman goes out there and provides. The Calgary Flames are trying to make this trade as quietly as possible, Friedman said. There's definitely something going on. New Jersey, Fitzgerald's on record saying that he will consider moving his 10th overall pick, and I know a lot of people are looking at in goal. The thing about Markstrom and trading for him is that he's basically a two-year by $6 million player you're trading for. If your choice is trading for a goalie, especially him with that contract, or going out and signing someone in free agency that might be a bigger number, you're very happy to take that. I can understand why there would be a lot of interest in Jacob Markstrom. Obviously, a lot of people are suspecting New Jersey, and there's a few teams that suspect Toronto and Ottawa as well. So with this in mind, not only is it the Jersey Devils that have entered the battlegrounds for acquiring Jacob Markstrom, but the two Ontario teams have put in their ballots as well, or at least that's what Friedman is saying some other NHL teams are thinking about. Yeah, it's kind of weird, right? It's by proxy, by Friedman, by other teams, whatever, whatever. But if we take a look at the goaltending of the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Ottawa Senators, it becomes very apparent why these two Ontario franchises would be interested in a Jacob Markstrom. Let's go over here to Toronto and talk about their goaltending for 25-26, or excuse me, 23-24. Getting my years mixed up over here. Joseph Wall, 907 save percentage, goalie of the future, he is fantastic. Martin Jones, 902 save percentage in 22 games played, a sturdy enough backup when he needed to be. But Ilya Samsonov had an 890 in 40 games played, was not good. And in the seventh game that he had played, he ended up crapping the bed towards the end. He finished off that postseason run with an 896 save percentage, a very far cry from the 964 that Joseph Wall was able to put up. 
Now, I'm not going to go out there and say that I believe 110% that Ilya Samsonov is going to be better and he's going to bounce back in the ways that many Toronto Maple Leafs fans hopes he would have. But I will say, if you were to find a way to get rid of Sammy and you had Wall and Markstrom as your 1-2 tandem for next season, let's say it's not even a 1-2, it's a 1-A-1-B. It's a swayman Olmark situation. It's a swapping around carousel. That, I feel, would be the best Toronto Maple Leafs goaltending duo they would have had in years. Wall is already solid, and he could just be getting better. Meanwhile, Jacob Markstrom is a solidified vet. He's had his great years in Vancouver, in Calgary. He was a Vesna finalist, and he is just a few years removed from being that, while also putting up a fairly competent season this year. If the Toronto Maple Leafs got that huge upgrade in goal, let's say they trade away Samsonov to Markstrom and they add on a whole bunch of other picks and prospects to make it go through, Calgary retains 50% because, of course, Toronto is cap-strapped. If you get Jacob Markstrom for two years at $3 million a season, that's a really good deal. Even if, in 25-26, Jacob Markstrom ends up becoming your de facto backup, he only plays 25 games, he'll already be 36 years old at that time, even if that's the case, you just gotta deal with it for one more year, it is that simple. And for Toronto, the price is going to be high, especially if all these other teams are interested. So it's very intriguing to me what Brad Trilliving is going to try to cook to get his former goaltender back on his new team. Meanwhile, for the Ottawa Senators, we've been talking about this the entire season, but their goaltending has stunk. Ay ay ay, very bad duo trio here. Corpusalo 890, Forsberg 890, Sogard 859. Not good. Not, not, not good. And who knows, man, I'm not even saying that the Ottawa Senators were an amazing team this year. I mean, they did have some okay point production from some guys. You recognize that Stutzla and Kachuk are probably better than this. Everybody on the Ottawa Senators had a down year, but still, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. But realistically, I mean, if you have 900 goaltending in 23-24, how many more games do you win? A good goalie can steal your games here and there. So if you just had a regular goaltender like a Markstrom, for example, putting up a 905, let's just say, the Ottawa Senators are maybe coming out of this season with four or five more wins, especially when you compare it to what they already got, maybe even six wins on the season. Now, six wins is not the be all and end all, but it could be the difference between a wild card and just barely missing out. Now, the Sens weren't just barely missing out, they were really bad, but still, if you expect a lot of guys to go out there and improve this upcoming season compared to the seventh overall worst record they had had in this most previously completed season, then there is reason to hope for the Ottawa Senators. But of course, Jacob Markstrom, he would have to waive his no-trade protection to go to a place like Ottawa. Do you think he'd really be interested in doing that, considering the status of that team and whether or not he himself would believe that they can get better? I will say, if Markstrom goes over to Ottawa, like Toronto, he would be the best goaltender Ottawa had had, let's say, since Craig Anderson or the Hamburglar, maybe? Who really knows? There is a pretty good buffer, I would say, for goaltending talent in Ottawa, especially when you talk about the guys that they just missed out on. I mean, Cam Talbot was really good after he had left. Philip Gustafson? pretty okay after he had left. So there's a really strange syndrome of Ottawa goaltending that doesn't really translate all too well in the ice. If Jacob Markstrom could be the guy to go out there and fix that, then hey, be my guest. He's very welcome to try. And now you have yourselves Elliot Friedman going out there and saying that, yeah, NHL teams are suspecting that Toronto and Ottawa are two of these teams that are involved, or at least asking about Calgary Flames goaltender Jacob Markstrom. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Devils, the Leafs, the Ottawa Senators, and Elliot Friedman's Jacob Markstrom trade update. What are your thoughts on these ideas? What are your thoughts on these teams potentially acquiring Marky Mark? And if you were a fan of the Sens or the Leafs, what are your opinions on what a trade could look like? What is the price you are willing to pay? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 9 and bye.